I think my moments of regret that I was unable, because of circumstances, to go back to Yemen and be just like Ahmed Afara. In fact, when I was chief resident, and chief residents here don't do what I did, that is, I went to do tonsillectomies. I went to other department to learn how to do tonsillectomies. I went to the obstetrics and gynecology department to do C-sections, to deliver babies, because I wanted to be able to do everything just like Ahmed Afara. But it didn't work. That was my low point. For the past almost 11 years, Dr. Abdu has worked here, and the physicians usually do their own billing. They bill for a professional fee separate from the hospital. And all of Dr. Abdu's billing has gone to the future breast care center here. I think one once recognizes how when you give it yourself, you're the beneficiary. But I think with Dr. Abdu, this has been something all of his life, knowing that his family, many of them were very, very sick and didn't have proper medical care going back to when he was a boy, a very, very young boy. And he saw that. He saw those stages of uh, death. And he wasn't able to help. And I think that with that was where the seed was born, in order to become a physician, a surgeon, in order to help humanity. Our patients here are practically all memorable. When you see someone coming in paralyzed from the waist down, or from the neck down, with ulcers everywhere, and you take care of them, and there they smile, and they thank you, and you ask them how things are, and they say, things are good, it's a good day. How can you forget people with that attitude, with that outlook? People are very important to me because maybe that's the reason I went to medicine. And so I can be with, work with, and help the people. So we have very busy hospital. Our emergency room is extremely busy. And the level of care is absolutely excellent. Memorable moments in Yemen are that period when all the talking has stopped, and it's got it got gets real quiet in the room, and the sun is getting ready to set, and it's right before the uh, the sunset prayer, and you're look you're in this room, and you realize you come to the realization how far you are away from your home, and you look out these windows, you're way up high in this room called a mufraj, and you look out across the city and you see the outline of the mountains in the background, the outlines of these buildings that date back hundreds if not thousands of years. And you just, you come to the realization that, you know, this is, this is where society, this is where civilization began. Or if you're out in the country, you're up on a hillside, and you look down across the valley and the lights, the people's lights just start turning on and you can see these little flickers of, as each village comes to life at night. And you're at that moment, everybody's really quiet and looking out across the, the valley. It's just a very serene, beautiful moment that really can't be uh, duplicated here in the United States. And I'm sure that most Yemenis would agree with that, those, Ameri those Yemenis who live in America. My dad, I want to look up to him because how he did with my family and how he helped us through the rough times and the good times. And I want to be like Kobe Bryant since I love basketball. And I see him as a big role model since he's really good in how he, when, how he became a basketball player when he went from high school to, the, to the, what's called right away, to the NBA. And not a lot of people did that. They all went to college. So I really look up to them too. Then I married Joni, and uh, she was a nurse at St. Elizabeth. And, and it was, she was a beautiful lady. And my children were her children. She did not have children before. 
never been married before. And she, um, she loved them and they loved her. She was kind, she was forgiving, she was tolerant, she was religious, and applied, applied her religion, not just put it, wore it on her sleeve. And all the years we were married, I had never heard that woman say one thing against another human being. And looking back, I tried to, to include some of those qualities within my own life. And often, many times, I'll say to myself, what will Joni do with this? So she is passed away, but she's still living, in a sense. And I hope that when we have the Comprehensive Breast Care Center open, I hope in a year or so, that she will live even more in the lives of so many women in this area and beyond. And this is Joni's picture. This is the brochure for the Comprehensive Breast Care Center. As I said, so far, we have about a little bit over five million, and we need three million. All this will be re gutted and remodeled to accommodate a comprehensive breast care center. We'll start with, I think, about 12 or 13,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will say probably by the end of 2010, there's only one in Ohio right now, in the whole state. There are 33 in the country. But when we have the comprehensive breast care center, we'll do a lot of things. MRI, digital mammography, everything. There will be uh, sonography, there will be biopsies, and there will be counseling, there will be educational aspect of it to the patient, to her family, and then a major programmed education for the community. That's good, good and people, good nurses. Good nurses, oh no, of course, not prerequisite. You're looking wonderful. Thank you. Pretty women with nice voices, sweet like you. Oh, okay. Yes. When they come to a center like this, that they will not to be afraid. They will understand. Mm. We are afraid mostly of that which we do not understand. You see, if we know it's a tiger, then we will find a way how to tackle that tiger. But if we don't know what it is, then we'll have no idea how to prepare for it, how to tackle it, how to defend ourselves. So education, becomes critical to these folks. And the reason, by the way, we selected to have it here instead of uh, uh, another place, because this area is convenient to the poor. And, and that's, that's one of the main reasons we have it here. So everything is oriented to help these women. Unlike my wife that had the highest grade and she died within 15 months, because for that grade, they live between 9 and 15, and she lived exactly 15 months, from discovery to death. Because I lost my wife, for one thing, and also as a surgeon, I have seen many women who had gone through this fragmented system, and they have gone, I see them, they will bring their film in their hands to my office because their referring physician sent them and they will be in the examining room sitting with this little film after my nurse prepared them, and I will see the tears coming down their eyes. And I said, honey, what's the problem? She said, do you know? I said, no, I do not know. And she said, you know what you're gonna find? I said, I don't know what I'm gonna find. I haven't even examined you. And then I go and I examine them, and most of the time, which should be 92% or 90%, I will find nothing. But here, this woman already has sentenced herself, thinking that she has the cancer, and she's going to die, and she's going to leave a family. And that's what today's system is. With the breast care center, you don't have to go through all that. And I wanted that. I wanted my dear wife to live, to be part of the lives of so many women since 
Shoot my stars. Sing.